Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're in need of a website, domain or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Sometimes it's just really hard to find the inspiration to go out there and take some photos. You can go on a dry streak and feel pretty uninspired. And recently I just got back from my first international exhibition, which was like a great thing. But then getting back, I'm like, well, what do I do now? What do I photograph? And I just ended up not photographing anything. So I've devised a little plan, a little exercise, which I'm gonna share with you, which kind of helps with getting the ball rolling again, and getting back into the swing of things of just thinking about photography and making pictures. So step one is pretty simple. Go and grab your camera. It doesn't matter what it is, it's more about the act of taking photos than necessarily how good they are. Step two, go to the nearest train station and just pick a random destination. Go somewhere that you haven't been to before or somewhere that you just haven't photographed before. Just buy a ticket and hop on. And step three, just go and capture what it feels like to be there, what you come across in this place that you're unfamiliar with. And don't come back until you've shot a whole roll. So I did this yesterday and I ended up in Acton in London, which is somewhere that I've been before. However, I've never taken a camera out here. I've never really explored. So I ended up shooting a roll of Fuji Pro 400H on my Mamiya 7 with the 80mm lens and actually with a ProMist filter on it as well. So I just wandered the streets with no particular idea of where I was heading or what I wanted to photograph. Just anything that caught my eye, I either walked that direction or snapped a photo. And I spent maybe just an hour doing this. And to me, the most important thing about this isn't the photos. I don't think any of them are gonna do anything. You know, it's it's much more about the act of going and taking photos and just kind of getting into gear and going to take even more after this day. These photos are more of kind of a catalyst than the end result. And hopefully this means I'll go out and make some cool photos soon. new thing I thought might be interesting was to talk through all of the images and why I took them whilst giving visual descriptions on this iPad that I got. Pre-warning, I don't know how this app works. Bear that in mind. So when I took this photo, the main thing which kind of caught my eye was this one particular flower. And I think, I don't know, I just liked the light on it and I thought it looked nice, it was a nice colour and I thought it would render nicely. And because I was using a rangefinder that has a pretty long minimum focus, I couldn't actually get a very tight image. This was at the minimum focus. So I decided to take it with a shallow depth of field, so we'd have this kind of fall off, which you can see in this kind of area, which I think actually looks quite nice. I don't think it's a particularly good image, but it's somewhat interesting and it kind of got the ball rolling, you know. As soon as you take that first photo, hopefully the rest keep flowing. Which leads us the second one which was this kind of street scene a road corner and the first thing about this one which i liked was the directional lighting there was weird weather going on uh this day it was as you can see pretty sunny but stormy like it was, really wanted to rain but the sun was still out so it has this really nice directional lighting coming in from over here and kind of the way it hits this side and then falls off across is something that I I really liked. That's what first caught my eye. And then the fact this is like a doctor's surgery uh, with what was going on outside of it kind of interested me. There was these two ladies just kind of having a chat and then this lady looks like she's throwing up, which I just thought was a bit ironic considering you've got this kind of big doctor's surgery, someone throwing up, people having a chat you know I just I thought it was just like a nice street corner scene and the lighting really kind of caught my eye and then we have this one which 
I don't know. I think I was just kind of into the repetition. Uh, unfortunately, I think the foreground came out a bit poor in this because kind of this whole... Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. This whole area, I think, could not exist. And I think without that, it would be a bit of a stronger image. And also, it would be nice if I kind of could have kept this in. But... Um, that was the limitations of my lens. There wasn't much I could do. I was standing on top of a fence to take this. So this was kind of the best angle I could get. But I do like this section uh, where it's kind of like this repetition, the kind of endless windows and satellite dishes. They're just something which intrigues me about some of London's architecture. And I'm always kind of drawn to taking, taking these photos. I also think there's nice little detail like the sunflower I remember looking at when I was taking it yeah it's not like a great photo the the building itself did catch my eye and I ended up taking another photo of it from essentially a few meters away uh, this kind of straight on perspective and the reason why I was drawn to take a second photo was actually for what's in these two windows this flat I don't know it's just like there's so much stuff in it you could see that um oh, <laughs> you could see through the windows that it's just like the whole room was stuff and um that's what really drew my eye to this i think the symmetry is nice uh, this is one of the better photos on the roll in my opinion and then there's this which is like just weird you know is this strange face in a tree uh, I tried to take this at the most shallow depth of field possible to kind of emphasize that because it is in the middle of like a busy park but also there was a I didn't really know how this was going to come out because this kind of portion uh, the the meter reading was like f4 at a 30th of a second whereas like over here was like six stops brighter so I'm pretty impressed how the film held up like it's really not very blown out over here um, and then also you can see in these areas, this is where the the filter that I was using kind of ha gives this kind of like soft glowy thing. Oh my goodness. Gives it this kind of soft glowy thing. And I think that looks quite cool. This is another one where you get that kind of soft glow. Uh, I think this kind of portion of the image it looks cool. I'm like, I'm testing this out at the moment. And I think it's going to look really nice when I do some portraits. And I think in this situation, maybe it's not needed. You could take some nice dreamy looking photos. Um, but the reason why I, I took this one, I don't think it actually came out as an interesting photo at all. But I really liked how dark kind of this part of the foreground was. But there was like this pool of light on this thing. And um, I just thought the lighting was interesting. This photo, maybe the worst of them all. Um, I just thought it was strange. Someone have this like cut out on their door and then there was a few bits of red dotted around to match with the tie, which just kind of, you know what they say, color is important in color photography and um, I'm proving it right with this awful picture. Then we got this one where I was crossing the level crossing of this overground station. I've never seen this in London before, which is why I had to take the photo. I just thought it was really strange um i've never been able to walk over train tracks whilst in london so i think it has really nice leading lines of like these bits but also the platform the top and then these wires it has a really nice kind of like draw of your vision and i think that worked quite well this photo didn't quite come out how i was hoping it to uh, in in real life this is the back of the train station and in real life uh, it looked quite interesting because there are these kind of strips of like darker area, lighter area, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. Like it it, it looked cool. It, the, the lighting looked visually interesting. And then there were these kind of like vertical industrial things kind of poking through. And it all kind of got a bit lost and didn't really work. And then this one as well. It had really nice light and texture when I was trying to take it, but I think I kind of messed up the exposure and it came out all a bit too 
bright like I was mainly interested in you can see here uh, you can see here there's like a really nice pool of light I was interested in that and some other parts where it just kind of what I wanted was this area to be a lot darker and to kind of focus on these highlights over here but that's what happened so yeah that's my photos that's my exercise maybe give it a go let me know what you think which brings me on to thanking squarespace again for sponsoring this video if you're in need of a website domain or online store squarespace has you covered it's a really great all-in-one platform where you can design professional looking websites for your photography a shop a blog pretty much anything you could want to make that lives on the internet you can do it with Squarespace. It's really easy to get great looking professional results and you definitely don't need any prior experience. And what's best is you can get 10% off if you use the code negative feedback. Go and get yourself a lovely new website to display your photography or anything else. So this wasn't a planned video. There's meant to be something else today, but we need to make it even better. So who knows what the future holds? New video soon. Bye.